there's been a lot of criticism for Kayshawn Booty of LSU. LSU's Bolitnikoff candidate, preseason All-American receiver who had 15 touchdowns in his previous 16 games, including nine in just six games last year before his injury. Um, unbelievable player, expected first-round draft pick. And then, you know, everyone on national TV saw as, you know, our number seven had, you know, ex- had the cameras all on him as LSU played Florida State in the Dome and did not have his best hour, admitted, admittedly. Um, you know, for both the quarterback and the receiver not being on the same page. Um, for, for him dropping passes, for, for just the ball not going his way at all, for him not even being given an opportunity to affect the game. Um, it was all bad, and many were, were really critical of Kayshawn Booty, saying that Kayshawn doesn't have the right mentality, that Kayshawn is already in the NFL, that Kayshawn is ready to transfer. It's the dumbest thing I've ever heard, but I've literally seen people, like 20-something people, post that at least. And I don't look too many times at these comments, but sometimes I, 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 I see these things and, and, and when people say that type of stuff, and it's like, what? You know, and I try not to take the crazy comments uh, to heart. I'll just be like, oh, jeez. But... A lot of times the the comments were saying, you know, Kayshawn's going to transfer somewhere, which, ridiculous, no. Um, But all eyes are on Kayshawn. All eyes on Kayshawn as we went to the Southern game, everyone wanting to see him get the ball and explode. And he had put up at 83 total yards, but he was pulled out of the game too soon, just like with Jaden Daniels, and neither really got a chance to fully develop their chemistry, even though LSU had put up a lot of points. So, I feel that was one opportunity lost. Yes, they got Kayshawn involved in the game with Jaden Daniels, but it wasn't enough. That You gotta get him in the end zone, you gotta get him over 100 yards, it was against Southern, the opportunity was there. And they took them both out too soon. Didn't allow them out that rare opportunity to really get their chemistry going against a very poor opponent where it would just be almost too easy and you could kind of you know, start to really get that confidence going. And then going into the Mississippi State game, you know, many are saying, "Where well, okay, we got to see Kayshawn explode now. We got to see Kayshawn explode now once again. Barely any targets, barely anything going. Um, both disconnect between quarterback and receiver. Entire offense when it, you know, really weird. Just running Kayshawn to the outside to you know with these little five-yard out patterns and stuff instead of running him across the middle with some slants, some some mesh route concepts, getting him into open space where he can use his vision. Some of the most exciting pair of eyes in football, Kayshawn Booty, when he is with the football in the open space, he just has to make one cut with that pace, and you know he's gone. He knows he's gone. He can already see the daylight before anyone can. Almost three moves ahead, he's gone. And we haven't seen that with Kayshawn because we haven't been calling these 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 routes across the middle too many times and when they're there we're not get, we're just not throwing them the football so you know there is some some blame on Kayshawn as well a few drops as well but there but I feel like there's been way too much um, there's been a, such a huge hyper intense um, pressure on Kayshawn from the fan base and from from a lot of different analysts saying, you know, has he checked out? Has he's pouting all the time? Blah blah blah. I haven't seen him pouting. 
since week one when he was having a very bad moment, was disgusted with what was going on, and was was letting his quarterback have it. Um, you know, he has completely reversed that 180 and has been such a consummate teammate. Even during the Florida State game, he was the first one to console Malik Neighbors. And it wasn't just a, a show for the cameras. Uh, kayshawn has been a very, very good teammate. It's not just coaching speak, as Brian Kelly has echoed, but this is really, you can see it. Um, when Jaden Daniels will t- tuck and run for a touchdown instead of throwing it to a wide open Kayshawn, Booty will be the first one to kind of celebrate with him, and he's smiling. He's into it. He's he's happy for Jaden. When you you see that happening, you know other guys getting their touchdown catches. He's one of the first to go over there and celebrate. You know with Jack Bash, with Malik Neighbors, with Dere Jenkins. That's what the film shows me. And then you see him celebrating like crazy in the locker room. After an awesome win on the road at Auburn, where he was, what what, what was it, like two targets all game? Two targets? And I know he had the drop pass. I know, I know, I know. But he had a drop pass that was literally going to go for like three yards a guy was right there to absolutely smash him. Why was that? Why was he even running that type of a route? What type of you know the play was design? Basically, is running him into hits at times, especially with the double coverage. You know, it's been tough for them to scheme a way to get Kayshawn open more. And maybe it's not as easy as running him across the middle, but maybe here's the thing, he's going to have to bite the bullet with the double coverage for most of these games. But he is Kayshawn Booty. He's wearing the number seven for a reason. He's going to find open space on multiple occasions, and you have to hit him with the football at those times. And you've got to scheme a way to put the ball in his hands. Jet sweeps, fine. Because at a minimum, you know, he's going to get like three or four yards. It's always going to be a positive play, even if they're they're completely reading it and on top of it. But at its best, he can absolutely take that thing to the house. So I I think people are sleeping on Kayshawn. I think people are forgetting about Kayshawn's mentality. And and here's the thing, too. I don't think they're being fair to a young man who's had a lot of distractions, a lot of changes in his life going on. A lot of intense pressure. And that's what you call for in college football. And he understands that. And and I'm sure he gets that. And he knows he has to improve. And he knows that he has a quarterback that he's got to... He's got to elevate. He's got to elevate his quarterback. He's got to make plays for his quarterback. And just get Jaden some confidence. But Jaden's got to do the same for Kayshawn. He has to find number seven. He has to get number seven in the football. If the play calls are going away from number seven too much, Jaden Daniels needs to speak up to Coach Denbrock and say, hey, we gotta, we got to get Keisha on the ball. And I'm sure Denbrock will have about 30, 40 plays already drawn up for Keisha on the, all right, let's call this one. You know, that's that's what needs to happen sometimes is some communication, some, hey, let's, let's try this, some experimentation, some creativity, with this passing game. And I think, uh, you know, there's been, you know, maybe you can call it fair, unfair. I, I believe a lot of the criticism Kayshawn's way is unfair. I do believe that he has earned some of the criticism. But at the same time, when you see that number seven has become the ultimate cheerleader for his teammates, a consummate really good strong teammate for that young young receiving core with a lot of potential you know I understand sometimes the body language hasn't been perfect or you know whatever you would like to see but sometimes you're asking someone whose personality is one way to be completely another Kayshawn's not a rah-rah guy he's a quiet dude 
he's a chill guy. And he is still even like reaching out of that to try and be that big leader. And he and he's been showing that leadership. But this is a thing that has to grow just like, you know, everything else with this team. So if you are an LSU supporter, an LSU fan, if you really like this team and this program, if you are rooting for their success, you shouldn't be ragging on Kayshawn Booty and talking, you know, internet smack about him. It's overly crazy. I get you have an opinion. Share that opinion. Believe what you want to believe. But at the end of the day, if number seven is catching a touchdown for LSU, you're going crazy, aren't you? You might be saying about time or whatever. I told you so. It's about time he showed up or whatever. But you have to think about the circumstances going into this season for Kayshawn. Not only with all that's going around for him, but then all that's going on with the team and the quarterback that LSU has right now. And then you have to watch the film and you be the judge. Is you know, are, are the receivers not making enough catches? Are they not playing you know, well enough on the secondary routes to, to find Daniels? Is Daniels not finding them? Is Daniels just purely missing throws? Is Daniels really struggling at you know, passing the ball? You could say both are true. You could say one is more true than the other. You know, you could say that the, the quarterback play has been far worse than the receiver play. But at the same time, the receivers do have an obligation to elevate their game, get creative with their secondary routes, understand exactly where Daniels is going to try and extend the play if he's going to. You know, that's the thing, too. These receivers are running a lot of thankless, tiring routes, fruitless routes. They're not getting the ball, and Jane Daniels tucking it and running vertically immediately, which gets LSU a lot of yards. But at the same time, you know, it's taking a lot of shots to the quarterback, and you've got a frustrated receiving core with just a lack of rhythm in the passing game, and you're suddenly, before you know it, extremely one-dimensional on offense. That's the problem LSU have to solve against Tennessee, and to do that, to unlock that, you're going to see, you know, hopefully some big contributions, some, some big plays drawn up for, for the likes of Jack Besh, Malik Neighbors, Jeray Jenkins, Brian Thomas Jr. as well. He's had a really good season as well. Um, but really, when it comes to the biggest plays, red zone matchups, especially against these corners, for Tennessee, who have both allowed over nine catches. They do have a, a couple interceptions on the season, uh, but they have been absolutely roasted at times in the red zone with these matchups. That is when, you know, you have to just run it across the middle, quick slant. Jaden Daniels snaps it, doesn't even think about it, and throws it to Kayshawn as hard as he is absolutely can right into the hands let Kayshawn catch that thing three yard two yard touchdown catch whatever get it in the end zone get number seven a score and then you're off to the races then you have something to build off of but until you know LSU can get some explosive plays in their passing game they're not going to reach the ultimate that they're looking for. And that's where it begins. You've got to get explosive plays. Dink and dunk, three, four yards. Okay. But that's almost like just an extension of the running game. You have to get explosive plays downfield in the passing game. And Brian Kelly's been stressing that. You know the offensive uh, staff is stressing that. Can the receivers and the quarterback execute on the same page? Can they pull this off against Tennessee? Because they're going to have to put up at least 35 points. 
they have to help that defense out and give them at least 35 points. You have to at least give that defense 35 points to, you know, on Saturday morning. You have to give them 35 points. And if LSU are to do that, could they be doing that with four, five rushing touchdowns and then maybe a defensive score or a punt return for a touchdown? Um, <laughs> I guess that could be possible. But it wouldn't be without explosive plays downfield taking them to the one or two yard line, which is where it seems that instead of like drawing up a red zone pass, they're more comfortable just bulldozing it into the end zone, which whatever, as long as it gets in the end zone, <laughs> who, who cares really? But you have to get these guys touchdowns. Jack Besh, Malik Neighbors, of course, especially, specifically, Kayshawn Booty. Because once you unlock the guy who's being double covered downfield, and you've already unlocked the guys who are benefiting from that double coverage, then, then you have a defense, an opponent, who really are in need of a change of pants. And uh, looks like they forgot the luggage at the hotel. So it's, it's on from there, especially with this receiving core. Um, and Kayshawn... Whether you doubt him or criticize him or not, I, all you know, FSU aside, this is a young man who I believe, deep down, is still yet to play his best football in 2022. Obviously, and you know, I I'm not sure how far this offense will allow him to go to the next level this season. I'm not sure how much this quarterback play will be able to unleash him this season. But at the end of the day, he is going to be a better receiver for the struggles of this season. And, uh, you know, I, I really think KB7 has every chance against this, this secondary to really get going and to really light it up against Tennessee. Tennessee.